All right, it's a big couple of weeks uh, for Australian boxing with uh, three fights this week taking place on American soil. We're going to talk about all three. Oscar Valdez taking on Liam Wilson. That is going to be on March the 29th on top rank on ESPN. That is a Friday here in the States. Um, hopefully, that's going to be, by the way, for uh, uh, at 130 pounds. And do not be surprised by the end of the week if we see, or before they get into the ring, if we see the uh, WBO title on the line that's currently occupied by Emmanuel Navarrete, who's moving up to 135 to fight Dennis Baranchek on May the 18th. We're going to talk more detail about that. The next uh, 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 topic we're going to talk about after that is the undercard of Tim Zhu versus Sebastian Fendor, where you're going to have longtime, near 41-year-old champion, Iris Lindy Lara, taking on Mick Zaraf. And then we're going to close out the video with uh, our fight week preview of Tim Zhu versus Sebastian Fendora. Fendora has been, it's been less than two weeks since Fendora place, replaced Keith Thurman, who had a uh, bicep injury. So let's jump into things. Um, this weekend on top rank on ESPN, you're going to have Oscar Valdez coming off of a loss against Emmanuel Navarrete, by the way, at 130 for that 130 pound title, taking on Liam Wilson, who is also coming off of a loss two fights, well, two fights ago, uh, three fights ago, actually, uh, Lost to Emmanuel Navarrete, where he actually did good and ended up letting Emmanuel Navarrete off the hook. To tell you how close that fight was, here's how the judges scored that fight. 76, 75, 76, 74, 77, and 74, 77. Or, uh, obviously, for uh, uh, in the way of Navarrete before he ended up stopping Liam Wilson in round number nine. Liam Wilson is 13 and 2 with uh, 7 KOs. You may remember years ago on the channel, some time ago, we covered his first fight. With uh, Joe Noyne, uh, and once he lost, he came back to, when he was stopped, and he came back to defeat him and stopped him in the second round um, less than a year later. So, how do I feel about this fight? Honestly, Valdez, 33 years old, long-time uh, 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 multi-division champion. Uh, he's lost two of his last three. His big fights, both to Shakira Stevenson and Emmanuel Navarrete, actually the biggest fights of his career at this point, outside of... Uh, Miguel Burchell, but I am not confident in him. Do I think that Liam Wilson can beat him? I don't think so. But overall, it should be a good fight. By the way, before we get into the fight, the undercard is actually pretty good. Tanesa uh, Estrada taking on uh, Yacosta Valley. Um, you're going to have Raymond Maratala taking on Lord knows. I don't know how to pronounce these guys' names. I'm just going to leave it up there on the screen for you. But we're going to be featuring Emilio Var Emiliano Vargas, the son of Fernando Vargas, Richard Torres Jr., Raymond Maritala, just to name a few names. It's a very big car taking place this uh, Friday in uh, Glendale, Arizona. So I'm going to go ahead and say that I will not be surprised if Oscar Valdez gets a knockout of Liam Wilson, but Valdez has been looking a little long in the tooth lately. Uh, what do you think about this fight, and what chances are you giving uh, Liam Wilson? Well, I mean, looking at um, his record, uh, when's the last time Valdez fought? That was in August. Okay, and Liam Wilson, he fought uh, John Jackson England in, in December. December, I believe. Or? December, yeah, and then before that, he that. fought in August. Yeah, okay. So, so he had three guys... fights last year. Yeah, In yeah, fact, yeah. this will be his so, fourth This will be his fourth fight in 13 in months. months. Yep, yep, yep. Well, it's that no limit thing. They, they keep these guys active, and that's the thing. Active fighters are dangerous fighters. So... <laughs> Yeah. Due to his activity, um, but Liam Wilson is very easily caught. His defense isn't great, and his chin's not great either. So, I mean, what that loss against uh, the Filipino guy, um, what was his name, John uh, Inoye? Joe, no, I saw Joe that no, Noine. Noine. If you remember, I, was, I said I saw that, that loss coming three fights before it happened because he was getting caught. By other guys long before he got knocked out by no, um, no yeah. So, and he got caught. He let Navarrete off the hook and paid the price for that. He got knocked out. So, I'm not, I suppose, I'm not confident that Liam can get the job done. I'm more than happy to be wrong. But I don't think he can get it done because he seems like one of those fighters that's a solid domestic fighter, but you put him on the international stage and he just doesn't seem to get yeah, the that's job where, done. Yeah, that's <laughs> where it, um, you know, that's where he, he falls short. I mean, this is the big fight. The, you know, here's the thing. 
if if this was three years ago, I would have picked Valdez to stop him. But Valdez oh, has I, been going through some things. Remember, he had the uh, the uh, uh, PD controversy of, of a couple of years ago. Uh, two big losses, two losses where he was dominated, both by Shakira Stevenson and surprisingly dominated by Manuel Navarrete, a guy whose style was made for him. He just got outworked. So I'm wondering at 33 years of age, and he's and by the way, he's been in a lot of wars, had his face broken, jaw broken, everything. You know, so I'm wondering how much is left of him. Yeah, he's only 33 years old, but that's a hard 33 with 31 and 2 with uh, 23 KOs. And I guess what I'm saying is if Valdez loses, it will be because he I don't think that Liam Wilson can beat Valdez. I think that Valdez can beat Valdez, if that makes sense. That's where I'm going with that. Yeah. So, so this is Liam Wilson's chance to really go out there to try to put it on him. I say he's got to play the he's got to play the pressure fighter. Exactly. You know he's got he's got to go right at Valdez. Who was old mate that he knocked out cold about three or four years ago? Hey Zeus, what was his last name? Happened in Australia. Just well, put him like he was out cold for hit the ground. What was his name? Um, I'm looking now. Hey Zeus, something. Oh, Jesus Caldro. Uh, Jesus Caldro. That's it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we'll now, see. We'll see. He's look, got the power. He's got some power. No doubt. No doubt. Because, yeah, he, he slept all right. He was out for hit the ground. But having said that, his chin's not the best, and his defense still isn't the best either. I mean, his defense mm. let him down against an Everardo fight because he got caught. Yeah. Right? Which he shouldn't have got caught. Well, um, and, uh, I mean, Sorry, yeah. People can sit there and whinge and bitch all they want. Oh, the ref did this, ref did that. Bullshit. You go watch the tape. Liam hit him when his glove was down. That's not a legal punch. Mm. So I, I don't buy into that controversy because he hit him when the glove was on the ground. That's an illegal yeah, punch. Yeah, remember that. So he's lucky he didn't. He, he's lucky he didn't get his ass disqualified. So mm. you know, people can whinge and bitch and carry on all they want. It's it's he hit him with an illegal blow. So, but, how's, yeah, I mean, <coughs> there's a lot of things working in Liam's favour because uh, Valdez, as you said, is 33, so he's, at, he's nearing the end of his prime. Those injuries, I'll tell you for a fact, age doesn't weary you, injuries do, right? And if he's had his face broken and several broken bones and all that sort of stuff, even though he's 33, his body's probably closer to 40. Yeah. So, and that's, you age, like, you can age 10 years overnight. Yeah. Like, Zhaili Zhang looked like he aged five years. I mean, he's 40, but he looked like he was in his late 40s against Parker. He just ran rings around him. Yeah. So, you can age overnight in those situations. So, um, One thing we can say, this is definitely a crossroads fight because if Liam Wilson loses, he's... Them. Yeah, both of them. He's, he's literally going back down to domestic level, and this will probably be his last pretty much main event over here. I mean, he's main eventing over here in the States, you know? Like, this is uh. this is it. And one thing um, we do have to say, uh, we brought it up before, is that Top Rank has really been taking care of Australian fighters. I have. You know, we're going to talk I about have. that later on in more detail when we talk about uh, Tim Zhu. So I'm going with uh, Oscar Valdez uh, by stoppage, but I will not be surprised if Oscar Valdez looks old overnight. And Liam Wilson takes him to hell and back. I won't be surprised, but I'm not putting too much faith in Liam Wilson. I'm just saying that I just don't have faith in Oscar Valdez anymore. Your final prediction before we move on? Well, like you just said, you said it without saying it, but it's a 50-50 fight. It could go either way. Yeah. Really, really, by your analogy, what you just said, that's it's a 50-50 fight. It could go either way. Yeah, and if Valdez and loses, I'm, I'm, it's I'm, definitely over for him at the big time. Mm, mm, so, definitely. With definitely. that being so, said... 50-50 fight. Go ahead. Obviously, I want Liam to win because, you know, I want the Aussie to win. But mm -hmm. it's a 50-50 fight. And as you said, both of them really could be their own worst enemy and actually lose the fight by their own by their own actions. Yeah. And uh, before I forget, so, let me uh, bring up the uh, rankings here. Uh, the WBC champion is Shockey Foster. He is uh, with top rank now. Uh, the WBA is Lamont Roach. He's with PBC. And Joe Cordina, the IBF, he is with uh, Matchroom. So um, if Emmanuel Navarrete ends up dropping the belt, he has to because he's already fighting for the uh, vacant title at 135 pounds um, for a shot to fight the winner of. Um, by the way, he's fighting. What is that? That's a couple of days before uh, 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 Loma Cambosos. Loma Cambosos is May the 20th, right? No, nah, it's May the 12th. May the 12th. Oh, yeah, that's a week after. Okay. It is. 
So, you, so we could see the winner of, uh, uh, for a separate video, Loma Cambosos take on the winner of uh, Navarrete versus uh, Dennis Baranchek, which is taking place on May the 18th. Now, right now, as it stands, Navarrete still is holding on to that WBO belt. As I said earlier in the video, do not be surprised if we have that vacant belt on the line. That's normally how top rank works. I'm surprised that Navarrete hasn't dropped the belt yet. Or maybe the guy ranked number one, uh, Albert Bell. And, okay, well, let me explain it this way. Albert Bell's ranked number one. Liam Wilson's number two. Andres Cortez, number three. And Oscar Valdez, number four. So maybe Bell and Cortez is protesting. And maybe the winner of Valdez versus Wilson is going to go on to face Albert Bell, who, by the way, had a huge knockout this weekend. Um, in a pretty much, I guess you could say a dark match. It wasn't televised anywhere. So that's probably why that title is not on the five. One of not on the line. One of those fighters between Bell and Cortez is, uh, uh, protesting, but, um, Oshaki Foster is going to be the fight to make if the belt is on the line, because that's going to be a unification. Um, moving on, uh, we haven't heard too much or seen too much of what's been going on with, uh, Mick Zarafa, who's going to be taking on, um, uh, Iris Lindy Laura this weekend and from what you've been telling me um, and what I've been hearing a little bit too is that he's not looking good I'm not going to make any excuses for him or anything but I'm wondering if there's something going on behind the scenes that we don't know about because another thing that's been noticed is he hasn't been doing any media obligations now here he is on the screen at the media workout last week for the uh, pay-per-view that's taking place this Saturday on uh, Amazon Prime here in the States, which we're going to talk about, um, $69.99. And over in um, Australia on main event and Foxtel pay-per-view is also $69.95. So this is going to be for the WBA title at 160 pounds in a division that's pretty much all over the place. Um, I was saying earlier, or, or leading up to this fight, that do not be surprised if Mick Zarafa wins, but now going into fight week, I'm not so sure. Now, here's the thing. Iris Lindy Lara, he's been around for a long time. You know, he's going on 41 years old, hasn't had any notable or credible fight since he fought Bron Castaño, and that was back pre-COVID. That was back in, in, in 2019. Since then, well, let me read out the schedule for you. Okay. So, one fight in 2018, Jared Hurd, he got beat badly, brutalized, bullied. Jared Hurd came into the ring damn near 200 pounds. Uh, Brian Castaño was the next year, one uh, in 2019, where he lost. Well, it wasn't it was a draw, but a lot of people felt he lost that fight, and that's when people were saying, "Okay, Laura's looking really old. His legs, you know, seem to have started to go away." Then he beat up Canelo's balding brother, a fight that nobody asked for. Roman uh, Roman Alvarez, um, another shitty fight in uh, 2020 against Greg Vendetti, another shitty fight in 2021 against Thomas Lamana, another even worse shitty fight. I don't even know how they pulled this off in 2022. Um, he fought Gary Spikel Sullivan, and now he's fighting Mick Zarafa. So if I was to be honest, looking at the last, well, let me tell you something. I would pick Zarafa over Sullivan. I would pick Zarafa over Lamana. I would pick Zarafa over Vendetti and Ramon Alvarez. It's just that that's not really saying too much. You know, so one thing we've noticed about Mick Zarafa and Big JLB to tell you, he's been pretty up and down over the last several years. Uh, what are your thoughts about the fight? Oh, and by the way, let me read Mick Zarafa's record, by the way. Uh, 31 and 4 with 19 KOs. His last fight was against uh, Danilo Creedy. Um, that was in 2022. Shit ass. Yeah. That was, that was terrible. Uh, Danilo Creedy fought on a no limit card the other day, got a draw, and apparently might be the next opponent for Nikita Zoo. Coming up, okay. so we'll see what. But Nikita's fighting next month, so I seriously doubt that. Okay, I seriously doubt they're going to throw him in there with Nikita Zhu uh, a month after because he only fought last Wednesday night. But Mick, um, his last performance against Danilo Crowdy was by his own mission, fucking shit house. It was terrible. Um, he got he banked the rounds. Um, I spoke to him before the fight. He goes, yeah, mate, I'm just looking to bank the rounds. I said, fuck that. Just knock him out. Sure, you're not supposed to go bank rounds yeah. against a guy like that. And it's not And it's not like but, he was on a layoff because he had just had that big knockout uh, win over uh, over uh, Isaac Hartman earlier in the year. Yeah, so, that's so, right. So, that's so, right. so, so, so listen so, to this. He's saying, he's, trying to, he's saying he was trying to bank rounds. But between December of 2021 and November of 2022, three fights. So, you yeah, know, that, you that, so that's bullshit. There, he just looked like shit. If you had those rounds up there, less than eight rounds, because he had one, one round against, two rounds against, one round against Chalk, 
four rounds against the Fijian bloke, mm-hmm. and another very short fight. So I, I, I could see where he was actually was coming from. It's like, okay, you haven't had a decent, you haven't had a yeah, full-scale fight in a while. That still don't make sense to me. He still, he still should have knocked this bloke out. Exactly. Like, why that, mess up your knockout streak? You know, it would have built his credibility, but yet he's going rounds with uh, Danilo Creedy. It doesn't make any sense. I don't buy it. I just think that he just had a bad night. It looked like shit. Yeah, true. And by his own mission, that's exactly what he said because he said that in the post-fight uh, fight, post, um, fight interview anyway. But this is Mix, in my humble opinion, this is Mix's last chance at the big time because if it he is. mucks this up, there is no, there is no, no more opportunities because Mick... For starters, who's he actually beaten to warrant this title fight? For Nobody. Real. Isaac it was, a, it was It was forced. No. Originally, it was supposed to be Ares Lindy Lara versus Danny Garcia, but the rumor is PBC couldn't come up with the money and to, to satisfy both fighters without putting it as a main event on pay-per-view. So, uh, Mick Zarafa um, was taking a step-aside agreement. You can explain this better. Um, you, you, can, you remember more than me about the step-aside uh, issue. He got screwed. He, got, he didn't get a cent because the fight never happened. Yeah. So... <coughs> and he's sitting around waiting and waiting supposed- for it to happen. He had to go to a WBA convention where it was actually mm. some some bullshit that went down between uh, 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 his manager. Uh, somebody got spit on. Uh, Samson Lukovic got spit on um, by his manager. Um, Samson Lukovic is the famous uh, manager um, who uh, brought Manny Pacquiao pretty much to the United States, the current manager of uh, David Benavidez and a lot of other fighters. So he went to this WBA convention, and the WBA was like, look, all right, look, he's the mandatory. You know, he's been waiting around for so long. We got to make the fight. He actually petitioned to force this fight. Well, that's good. Because initially, he was supposed to fight Lara in August of last year, on mm-hmm. August 5th. Then it got pushed back. Then it got pushed back, and Danny Garcia got into the mix for what was going to be up. I mean, they weren't even, what was it, a catch weight at 155 or something? Yes, fucking it was. Bullshit. Yeah, so it was all just bullshit. It never should have happened in the first place. But now we're getting the fight that should have happened, what, six months ago? Eight mm. months ago, bloody hell. However long friggin' August 5th was. Um, and, yeah, but the thing is that Mick Zarafa's record outside of Australia is 0-4 because all of his four losses, uh, except for oh, uh, three losses, three mm. fights overseas, three losses. Lost to Kel Brook. Right, everyone says that that was a fight that could have went either way. Yeah, I remember uh, that. Lost to the Russian in Russia, which the Russian was basically a nobody. And who's the other bloke that he fought overseas? Oh yeah, of course, Peter Quinlan almost took his fucking head off. Yeah. So. So. Yeah, I remember that. He has. Yeah, I mean, but yeah, mind you, Sent Mick was only stretching. a babe when that. Yeah, he was like twenty-two years old, and he was taking on the best puncher in the division. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he got slept in five. Um, but, you know, now this is his final chance because if he can't beat a four, damn near 41-year-old in his Larry Lara who has... Whose legs are, are looking has, shot. Who, who has done fuck all since the Castaño fight, right? It's going to be a pretty bad look for him and he will he, he will be down, so far down the card, it won't be funny. He'll be, doing, he'll be back doing club shows or... Whatever he was doing beforehand. So. And, the, and the crazy thing is, the crazy thing is, um, as you brought up, you know, this can open up the door for that Tim Zoo fight if Tim Zoo decides to move up to 160. Well, that's exactly One day. right. I of, mean, cor- yeah, of, it, course, of course, of course, Zarafa will have to hold on to the belt and keep winning because we all we are, we already know that uh, Tim Zoo is going for undisputed at 154. But still, even let's say for example, let's say for example, if Tim Zoo loses to Crawford, let's just say hypothetically. If, that, if he beats Fandor, they're going to make the Crawford fight. He says, you know what? All right, I'm going to move up to 160. You know, that Zarafa fight is right there. And it'll be for a championship that they can make in, in, in Australia. So it's a lot riding on this. Um, and the big fights he'll be able to get. Exactly. With the potential exactly. to retire here is Landy Lara. So, you know, exactly. so, so he need, I'm hoping that he's taking this fight seriously. And also, I think I'm looking at her right there on the screen. Um, uh, he's still with, uh, uh, Rachel Donaire and Onito Donaire, right? I believe so. Okay, yeah, I think I'm looking I at her right so. now. She's a viewer of the channel, by the way. She pops up in the chat every now and then. Um, oh, so, so the champions in the division right now are, we don't know what Jamal Charlo's doing. The WBC still bullshitting around with that. You got, uh, Carlos Adamas, who is the WBC interim champion. Iris Lindy Law, of course, the WBA. And Janabek Ali Mahanala is the IBF and the WBO. He's been begging 
to try to get a fight. But he's right now, he has the boogeyman status in the 160-pound division. And frankly, the 160-pound division is pretty shitty until guys from 154 move up. Like, it's, it's a very weak division after uh, Canelo and uh, Golovkin left the division, especially with the uh, Charlo debacle. So I'm going to go ahead and give my prediction. Um, everything to lower by decision. But the, uh, we're going we're gonna to know... We're going to know the first three rounds, like, three what, rounds. Type of, yeah, like what type of fight it's going to be. Because I'm telling you, Avery's Lindy Law, he's been having to rely on punching power his last several fights. Because, by the way, the last two guys, which he should have knocked out, Spike Seville and, and, and Lamana, they've been knocked, they've been stopped. But what we've noticed leading up to this, oh, and by the way, Laura's knocked out three of his last four, but that doesn't mean anything because they're low level competition. Like super low level competition. Um, guys that he's supposed to knock out. But um, he's been relying more on his power because he hasn't been moving as much as he used to in the past. He used to be a mover. And also, another thing about Irvis Lee DeLar, he has very limited uh, uh, punch variety. He's not a body puncher. Just straight jab, left hand. That is Irvis Lee DeLar. He's always been that way, and that's a, lot, uh, that's a reason why a lot of people felt he lost the Canelo fight because he just was jabbing. You know, so um, I'm, yeah, well, giving, I'm, I'm giving Lar, I'm giving... Laura by decision, but if Zarafa was to win, it would be from output or a knockout. But you know, I'm I'm still all over the place with that. Uh, your closing thoughts before we move on to Zoof and Dora? Yeah, same thing. I mean, I think uh, so on the the betting things this week, uh, this, today that Lara is the favorite. Mick, I think, is paying like three dollars sixty or something. Lara is like a dollar forty or some bloody thing. Mm. So Lara is the favorite. I mean, obviously, I want Mick to win because I want that. Do Zarafa fight, but uh, uh, again, it's going to be this is going to be exactly like Green Mundine. They're going to dance around each other for years, and by the time it actually does happen, it's going to be probably too little, too late. Mm. So, because if it, it won't happen, because Do will most likely and pretty much you can pretty much bet the house on it that he'll beat Fendora, fight Crawford. Crawford will friggin' backhand him one, right? Then he'll probably. Um, uh, fight with Dream Off or what's the other bloke's name? Mertesali had to get a title, get mm. a belt back, and I don't, it might not happen for another three years. And by then, both those guys will be yeah. in their th- well, pretty much the same age. Green and Mundine were because Green was what thirty five and Chuck yeah. was like thirty three, so they weren't in their primes when they had their first fight. Then we had to wait eleven years for their second fight. So yeah. uh, I'm hoping history doesn't repeat itself, but. I really hope Mick has taken this seriously. He doesn't muck around. Get in there and just belts the daylights out of Indus Larry Lara and gets a belt because if he doesn't, um, it's pretty much what's he going to do because there's uh, the Isaac Harbin rematch is a waste of freaking time because he just got his ass knocked out by a Venezuelan bloke yeah. or Mexican bloke. Um, his rebuilding process uh, went straight to shit. Yeah, exactly. So he's got to rebuild again and there ain't that many flash middleweights in Australia in the first place. So, um, the, uh, the Harbin rematch is a complete waste of time. <coughs> um, yeah, I mean, if he loses this, it's pretty much, that, that's curtains for his career. I mean, what else is he going to do? Yeah. So, but, um, I don't really think he needs to worry about the, the media. It, he needs to be focused on the fight. Don't worry yeah, about and, the media. And then you go, maybe that's media. what it is. Maybe he's just like, you know what? I'm super focused. It's the biggest chance of my life. Exactly. This is the this is the last big chance he's going to get. And bugger the media. Yeah, just focus on what you because if he wins the belt, the media will come after that. Yeah. If he's if his management has told him, yeah, mate, don't worry mm-hmm. about the cameras, just work, focus on winning the belt, and then you can bask in your glory. Okay. So. By the way, um, um, I will be here, or we will be here streaming the uh, final press conference. Uh, stay tuned for the channel. Um, on the channel for that link, and we will be here streaming. The uh, weigh in, and we will be streaming after the fight. I will be providing post fight coverage for pretty much the entire card. Before we get to Zufendora, let me tell you what the card is. Of course, the main event is going to be Zufendora, Roller Romero versus Isai Cruz. You can expect the individual uh, uh, pre fight video or fight week video from me on that. Arizona Dilara versus Mix Zarafa, Brian Mendoza versus Sergei uh, Bahachuk, Julio Cesar Martinez versus Angelino Cordova, Elijah Garcia versus Karan Davis, and basically it's a stacked card. Um, you have one, two, three, four, five, six titles on the line on this pay-per-view. Um, it seems like we've been talking about it a lot, but we really haven't. 
uh, Tim Zhu versus Fendor, very interesting fight. What I've learned is a lot of fans, Australian fans in particular, feel this is a much more significant fight than the Keith Thurman fight, despite the fact that Fendor is coming off of the defeat. Sebastian Fendor, uh, every single fight, and I'm not even joking around. It's multiple fights on Showtime. His height has changed. It's one fight to six foot five, Sebastian Fendor. I know the fight to six foot seven, Sebastian Fendor. The six foot six, but yeah, he's about six foot six. He's listed at six foot five and a half. 21 and one with 13 KOs. You would think that with that 80 inch reach of his, that he would be a boxer mover, but nope, he is a, he is a brawler. Pressure fighter, power puncher, it does not make sense. Um, last fight was against uh, Brian Mendoza, who also Tim Zhu beat in his last fight, where Brian Mendoza stopped him in seven in um, April of last year. So already, uh, 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 Sebastian Fendor is what? By that time, one week, yeah, one week before a uh, one-year layoff. Um, before that, Carlos Ocampo, who also, he went 12 rounds with him, and Tim Zhu put his dick in the dirt. Oh, what was that one round, right? That wasn't even like a half a round, was it? When did Tim's 90 happen? seconds. Yeah. 90 seconds. There you go. Half a round. You know, stopped him. And then before that, Quarter Erickson around. Rubin. And then before that, oh, Erickson. Yeah, 90 seconds, yes. And yeah, then before sorry, that, yeah, Erickson I'm Lubin, right. where Sebastian Fandora literally uh, broke Sebastian Fandora's face. I'm talking about something. It was a close fight. It was a brawl. But he ended up like battering Erickson Lubin. Just go ahead and Google uh, Erickson Lubin Fandora. You're going to Fandora, and you're going to see um, um, uh, how he brutalized his face. And then before that, Sergio Garcia. So right there, he's had some credible opponents. Um, very solid resume. And 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 I can understand where people are saying, okay, well Keith Thurman hasn't done shit. Let me explain why Keith Thurman was headlining. Keith Thurman obviously maybe not anymore, but used to bring in very big ratings for PBC. On on Showtime, on uh, on uh, CBS when he fought Danny Garcia, you know, um, on ESPN when he fought uh, Luis Colazo, and on pay per view he fought Manny Pacquiao. So for their first inaugural event, which they pretty much stumbled out the gate to to get out there, I guess they were feeling that Keith Thurman would be the the perfect. A person to match Tim Zhu against an Australian to hopefully boost up this pay-per-view. So a lot of fans have been saying, I've been saying that the fight's going to flop. I've been saying that the fight's going to flop in the States. That is, that is, that cannot be debated. It is going to flop here in the States. It is not going to make the money that PBC would want it to make. However, over in Australia on the Oceanic Territories, yes, the fight's going to do pretty well. I, I, I expect for it to probably bring in more pay-per-view buys overseas um, in Australia than it would in the States. Despite the fact of how stacked this card is, it's just not moving the needle. And we already, I already know that they're giving out tickets to try to fill out the arena. So do not be surprised in the T-Mobile arena where it seats about 20,000 or so, eight, I forget, 18 or 20,000 or so, that you're going to see the uh, top areas curtained off. It is not a fight that's really like moving the needle. Um, ticket prices are being slashed. However, I will say I rate this card to B+. You know, I, I'm very close to rating this card eight. There are some very interesting fights that I'm really, as I said, you know, Zoo versus Fandor. If it wasn't for a pay-per-view, it's a very good, interesting fight. A fight that could sell out over in Australia. A fight that can lead Showtime Boxing over here in the States that's not pay-per-view. Roland Romero versus Isak Cruz. If this was last year, the way Showtime was going, this would have been a pay-per-view, despite the fact that it's not a pay-per-view fight. Arizona Delar versus Mick Seraphic and lead its own card. Brian Mendoza versus Sergei Bodchuk in a smaller card would lead something back in the day like HBO Championship Boxing because, you know, it would be like Boxing After Dark. So these are fights that can actually, you know, be their own, that can be the headline of their own cards. So I'm not disrespecting the card. It's a great card. I'm disrespecting the fact that this is PBC's debut on Amazon Prime and, this, and they're putting this on pay-per-view for 70 bucks. And by the way, Amazon didn't start promoting this fight until last week. A few days ago, they finally put it on their uh, on their uh, Prime Video page. So um, yeah, bloody crazy. Yeah, so um, I strongly and I strongly feel, and we're going to talk about it a little later on that Tim Zhu needs to head over the top rank. We're going to get into de into detail about that, and I'm going to go ahead and say that Tim Zhu, as I'm pulling up the face off here between Tim Zhu and Fendora, as you can see, Tim Zhu should have no issues getting to the body of Fen Sebastian Fendora. It is literally right there. He will put himself in danger trying to lunge to go up top. But guess what? 
Pandora doesn't fight as a big fire. He slouches over, so he doesn't use his height. So who knows? If Tenzu can't stop him to the body, he might be able to stop him um, um, with a knockout just because of how Pandora fights. But just looking at the height of both of these fighters, it is, like, it's immense. It's, it's something. Uh, your thoughts on the fight? Yeah, well, I mean, there's a few people out there that say Fendora's got a chance. I'm like, what bloody chance? I mean, he hasn't fought in a year. He got knocked out by Mendoza. People like to say, oh, well, he won every round of the fight. I'm like, so fucking what? He got his ass knocked out. I don't give a shit yeah. how many rounds he bloody won before he got his ass handed to him. He got knocked out and knocked out badly. Tim will. Tim hasn't done body shots for a while. I mean, Takeshi Inoue, and, uh, Takeshi Inoue was probably the last guy that he went to the body with solidly. Mm. But I think he'll use the body shots to his advantage and just crack this poor bastard's ribs, wait for his head to drop, and then uppercut the living shit out of him like he did mm. Dan Hogan. So also, Tim Zhu's got to watch out for Vendora's uppercut. Sorry, Tim's got to watch out for Vendora's uppercut. He's got a mean uppercut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People have been saying that. I've been watching a few videos, uh, both uh, Australian and overseas, and they're all saying the same thing. Yep, uh, a pressure fight, a brawler might give Tim some problems and. Pandora does like an uppercut. So that, I think that's the one thing that Tim hasn't really fought is a pressure by Most of the guys that he's fought were all boxers. They weren't really pressure mm -hmm. fighters. So it could be, it could be interesting because if Tim loses, and we need to address the elephant in the room, Tim loses, that's very, very detrimental. Yeah. But I think PBC would actually want him to win because PBC knows that on an international scale, Tim versus Crawford is a much bigger fight than Pandora versus Crawford. Yes, of course, by much far. Much bigger. <coughs> by far, because, I mean, it's not going to happen, but if they got Crawford to come to Australia, that's a massive bloody fight. Mm -hmm. That's a massive fight. And that's one thing I know about Terrence Crawford is, he, what, what we learned about him, he would, I believe he would go to Australia. I believe he would follow the money. I don't think that, I think, obviously, Tim Zhu, he wants to be an American star. He already said, like, he wants to base himself here. But I think that Crawford would go um, uh, over to Australia. So, first, obviously, Tim Zhu's got to get past Sebastian Fendora. And then, after Sebastian Fendora, the sky's the limit. For those who don't know, um, Terrence Crawford was at a WBO convention about two weeks or so ago. Once I saw him, once I saw him there, I already knew what it was. He was going to petition to be either the WBO mandatory at 160 or 154, and 154 made the most sense. So, and now he is the official mandatory for uh, for uh, Tim Zhu and the winner of this fight. So, to look at the rankings here, let me break it down for you. Um, currently, right now. Jamel Charlo, he is the champion in recess. Uh, Sergei Bahachak and Brian Mendoza are fighting for the WBC interim. Um, and then, oh, and then, so basically, WBC has three belts. That's weird. They're going to have three belts this weekend. So you're going to have, uh, or three champions. So Jamel Charlo is going to be the, he's the champion in recess. The winner of Zoo versus Fundora is going to be the WBC, the vacant titles on the line, and the WBO champion. Brian Mendoza versus Sergey Bachchuk is going to be the WBC interim. WBA is held by um, Israel Madrimov, who beat the holy hell out of uh, Magomed Michael, Michael uh, Kurbanov. That video is on the channel, by the way. Was that a couple of weeks ago? And then you have Bakram Murtazaliyev taking on Jack Kuke in April. That's April the 8th, right? Yeah, that's April the 8th. Yeah, that's, next, that's the week after. The you know, so after. so I'm expecting, by the way, I'm going to be covering that fight. Um, we're waiting for somebody here in the States to pick it up. If not, I'll find it somewhere because it's a highly interesting fight. Um, and then you have Tim Zhu or, or, or Crawford and Tim Zhu. It's looking like Crawford and Tim Zhu, if Tim Zhu beats Fondor, of course, will be happening in July. You know, both those belts. Because, yeah, and, and Crawford has uh, already pretty much uh, started back training again, you know, for a fight. And do not be surprised. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and bet my money that Crawford's going to be there this weekend. You know, um, at I'd the fight. be mad not to. You know, so and, and, and one thing about this division right now is there's no politics stopping the fight, the, the um, stopping um, uh, it being an undisputed champion outside of a dream off being over uh, um, over on match room. Still, Tim Zhu, I believe Tim Zhu may be a free agent after this fight or we need to find out what's going on with that, what his contract is, because the way PBC works. They may have been like, okay, well, we'll put you on our pay-per-view to headline Amazon Prime. But if we do that, we want you to re-up with us for three more fights. Now, Crawford right now is a promotional free agent. Me, personally, I think that Tim Zhu needs to go to, Terrence, needs to, go to ESPN. And the 154-pound division is not held up. I'm going to say held up. It's not heavily dominated like PBC 
like it was with PBC before um, a couple of years ago, where if Tim Zhu would have signed with ESP and top rank, he would have had the same issues that Crawford had getting PBC fighters. But I don't I just I just don't feel that PBC has been doing him well. Yeah, he's been headlining events. Yeah, he's headlining uh, pay-per-views. But over on ESPN, for those who don't know, um, over in Australia, it's our biggest sporting platform. And one thing about ESPN is, you know, they're going to be cramming Tim Zoo content down our throats, especially before his fights. PBC right now, they, they I, I just don't think they can do it. If he wants to be an American star, an American star, you know, I think the way to go is for a uh, top rank. But Terrence Crawford, who sued Bob Arum, by the way, for racism and basically saying that he wasn't promoting him like he was promoting Mexican fighters. I don't I never believed the bullshit. I just thought it was a smack in the face. Me personally, I think it was a bullshit lawsuit. We don't know what happened with that lawsuit. But uh, Terrence Crawford has been seen in the locker room at multiple um, uh, top rank events with uh, Keyshawn Davis, uh, uh, Shakur Stevenson, and of course, any fighters that uh, Bo Mac McIntyre trains. So it doesn't seem that the blood is too bad there for them, for him and Tim Zhu to possibly uh, fight on that platform. But uh, your thoughts on that? Um, how PBC has been handling uh, uh, Tim Zhu so far? Oh, and one more thing. His ratings on Showtime has been abysmal. They've been super low, not moving the needle, not doing nothing at all. Well, I can't, I can't get past the fact that there's a few things that uh, I can't get past. What t- one is, why the fuck does Tim want to be an American star? Vegas is not the boxing mecca it was when his father was around. Vegas was it 20 years ago. Vegas is no longer it now. You can get Fury versus AJ in Wembley Stadium in front of 90,000 fucking people. Yeah. You can get the Saudis who will piss out $20 million like it's nothing to put a show on two days before Christmas. Right, right, but nobody can travel to. You've got Australia, right, who will get 50,000 people into a footy stadium to watch Pacquiao fight a kid fight a school teacher yeah. so vegas the, the american market vegas is going down the freaking gurgler vegas is no longer the boxing mecca it was yeah. so why the fuck would you want to go to america i mean tim has got enough problems trying to get when he fought harrison that was 12 and a half, 12 and a half thousand people showed up to an arena that seats twenty one thousand people yeah i don't give a shit what you say that's not a sellout tim can barely sell even though he's crammed down our throats, he can barely sell out stadiums here. How the yeah. fuck's he going to do it in America? Why the hell would he want to be a star in America? What for? What is the benefit? He would make more money, get more, <coughs> get more gate, get more pay per views in this country than he will overseas. No one gives a rat's ass who he is overseas. Yeah. Right? I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. Okay, Crawford. That's a massive fight, but that's a massive fight back here. You get what? I say. I say you get. Probably close to forty, if not more, thousand people to that. I mean, George got forty thousand to fight Devin Haney. Yeah. How many? Yeah, Tim's been crammed down our throats all those years. Crawford is a big fight because it's a unification bout. Plus, getting one back for uh, Jeff Horn, right? Because well, we all remember Crawford smacked the crap out of Jeff Horn. Yeah. So, plus, you know, Bob Aaron's been very good to the Australians, bringing massive fights. To Australia, not just taking care of the Maloney's and Liam Wilson and all those other boys, but getting. If you look at the, if you look at the, over the last few years, Bob Aaron's got all the big fights in, the, in this country. Yeah, Haney, the two Haney fights with George, now the Loma fight, and the fight with Pacquiao and Horn. That's all Bob Aaron. And, and then also look how he, look how he's been, you know, treating the Maloney's, and look how he's been, um, uh, even even Liam headlining Wilson. Liam Wilson. Mm-hmm. So. That's the way to go. I mean, PBC doesn't <laughs> seem like they really they really give a rat's ass because their promotion on this Amazon Prime card, as you said, has been pretty piss poor. Exactly. I mean, for, out- you know, for a guy like Tim Zhu, an Australian trying to headline a pay-per-view, they needed to be forcing him down our throats, like you said, when it comes to Australia. You know, because nobody knows Tim. I'm sorry, um, 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 Tim Zhu fans. You know, Tim Zhu's not known over here. You know, like, they're trying to raise his profile. They were trying to use Keith Thurman to raise Tim Zhu's profile. You know, Tim Zhu, I mean, Keith Thurman, he may not have known it, but Keith Thurman was being sacrificed by PBC to Tim Zhu to try to build Tim Zhu's profile. Yeah, and unfortunately for us, um, you know, Keith, he actually did do himself a mischief and fucked his bicep, so that fight was never going to... I mean, I call bullshit. I don't think that was ever going to happen. I think it was just a ploy to promote 
Tim versus Pandora. So, they had all happened too quick and got sorted out too quickly for that not to be the original plan or at least plan B. I mean, that, it, had that to be, I had, it had to be plan B because of uh, uh, Keith Thurman's notorious history of injuries. And one thing they could not do was cancel this pay-per-view. They've already been stumbling out the gate to get this Amazon mm -hmm. Prime deal going. You know, so they could not just cancel the whole event. So it had to be, you know, Fandora. They had to already have this in plan, which is why they had Mendoza already on the card, which is why they had, uh, as you said, uh, Tim Zhu was sparring with Mendoza. You know, they probably already knew something was going on. Well, yeah, you, you think of a fight of this magnitude, and the, this card is bloody excellent. I mean, to their credit, the card's ten times better now than what it was when Keith Thurman was headlined. It was just another... Blown up, washed up welterweight that Tim Zoo was going to kick the living shit out of him. Probably inside of five rounds, everyone's going to go, oh, well, that's not going to do anything. But this fight's a lot better. It's a more credible opponent. The prize is better. And the big cherry on top is that the winner gets Crawford. Yeah. So yeah. what's not to like? It's, yeah. it's much, much better. So, and probably they saw that Crawford went to the WBO and went, oi, I want the winner of this fight. They went, oh, shit. We better make this a little bit more enticing for Crawford. So, mm. so because, yeah, you know, um, if Crawford wants to be a three time undisputed, because if he goes 154, I don't think there's anyone that will bother him. Nah, um, right now, I think, now, Tim, let, let, let I think Tim's his only real threat. And, um, and, um, even the though, guys, and even though you have, you know, you've, you know, uh, let your thoughts be known on Virgil Ortiz, but Virgil Ortiz is a, is a problem. So the only real movers and shakers at 154, I guess we could say that, that Crawford is up there now, is Tim Zhu, Crawford, um, Virgil Ortiz, and on the outside, uh, um, Israel Madrimov, and be outside of that, uh, Jesus Ramos. Those are the real guys. You got a guy like Xander Zayas, but he's not ready yet. Um, Top Rank is taking their time with him. Yeah, but Crawford beats all those blokes. There you go. Yeah, Crawford all of them. Beat, yeah. Crawford beats. So Crawford goes to 154. He'll just dominate. Tim, yeah, he can clean it out up. Out of all those blokes, Tim's his only real threat. He'll beat all the rest, no problem. Yeah. Easy. Easy. Because Tim would kick the shit out of a lot of them. Yeah, no would. problem at all. Yeah, yeah I, so, I, would, I would pick Tim. As I'm looking at the rankings right now, I would pick Tim to be Josh Kelly, Josh Kelly, Erickson Lubin, Xander Zayas, um, uh, uh, Bahachok. Let's pay attention to him this weekend. Um, it was an interesting point you made that even though we lost Keith Thurman, the fights are more meaningful. And they make, for example, Mendoza versus Bahachok. That's a very interesting fight. It is. And what I find funny is that poor bastard's fighting for a vacant title that he never actually lost. How about that? Did you so, know? Yeah, I mean, because that, that what they should have done is when dude fought Mendoza, they should have told, told Charlie to go fuck himself, right? Took the belt off him, which they still technically haven't done. What's this champion recess for shit? I, anyway, I, 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 hate, I hate when they do that. That's basically the way of like, okay, well, you're injured. You're not coming back. We're not going to distribute you. As we know, PBC... Um, has a, has a tight relationship with the WBC, kind of like uh the WBO and our top rank. We are in top rank. But one yeah, thing yeah, for sure is like, the yeah, WBO yeah. will strip you and they will order you to fight. When it comes to the WBC, when it comes to guys like Canelo, the, I don't know what it is with the Charlos, they will not strip the Charlos. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't know. They give I mean, the Charlos all kind of extensions. Both of both of the brothers. Exactly, they can pretty much do whatever they want, and I'm going on record. I don't give a fuck anyone says Charlo's flat out duck and Benavides. End of story. Um, so, so do I say Charlo? Do I say Canelo? You said Charlo, but you Canelo. Canelo yes. Mm -hmm. Canelo's duck and Benavides. I don't give a fuck. He's he's ducked him too many times. He ducked him last time. Anyway, moving on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, so yeah, Tim uh, will most likely, and I'm pretty much pretty much you know ninety nine point nine percent defeat. Bendora, smack him around, have the fight with Crawford. That pretty much only goes one way, right? Unless Tim pulls off a friggin' miracle. But then again, 20 years ago, he's, everyone thought Zab Judah would beat his father, and we all know what happened there. Yeah. So, I so, and then whoever wins that, whoever wins Zoo Crawford, easily dominates, dominates the rest of the division because no, those are two of the top, top two guys, and Crawford's not even there yet. Mm. So, there's no real threat to Tim. No one's really a threat to him, so because he'll just level the entire he'll level the entire division. But yeah. Crawford's his only threat, and vice versa. All right, uh, closing thoughts. How do you see the fight going, Zufendora, and who wins? Uh, and who what did I say? Body. What did I say? Uh, ninth round tick. Uh, ninth round uh, stoppage. I'll yeah. stick to that. Yep, I definitely think it's going to be a stoppage. Um, 
But then again, Tim might just go bugger it and cave his ribs in and knock him out within two rounds. So, Let, yeah, let's has see if he makes a statement. He needs to. He really, really needs to. I mean, people have been saying, uh, people have been asking that question, does Tim need to make a statement? You always need to make a statement. Especially for a first pay-per-view here in the States, he wants to get trending. He wants If he wants to he, be a star, he needs to do something trending. Exactly. You know, he needs to, need to, need to go out, out there. It and, needs to be... Yeah. It needs to be a devastating knockout. You know, it needs to make a statement, and people need because also a devastating knockout will go. Oh shit! You might have a chance against Crawford. Exactly. Yeah, because if he does a twelve round decision, it's like that's not going to do nothing for him. Away with that. Sorry. That's not a twelve round. Not going to do nothing for him. If he wants, if he wants to be the guy he says he wants to be. You know, he needs to go out and make a statement that is trending all over social media, that, that is trending mm -hmm. on our sports platforms. You know, the pay-per-view last mm -hmm. night. Uh, you, and you know how they're going to do uh, uh, Costa Zoo's son, Tim Zoo, headline. Up. He needs to trend tomorrow. He needs to trend this weekend. If he wants to be a star and, as you said, um, uh, to, to you know start building up that Crawford fight as himself being a threat, he needs to go out there and put a boot in Sebastian Fendora's ass. Knock him out, cold, the type of body shot where it's like, oh my, just devastating power. Exactly. Exactly. That's what, he, and he's got the ability to do it. No one can't say that he, mm. that he doesn't. He certainly has the ability to do it because he's built the evidence over that over the last four or five yeah. fights to say that, oh yeah. Because I, I said originally I thought, and he can also get one back from Daniel Lewis, if you remember, he fought Fendor on the Tyson yeah, I remember that. Wilder 2 undercard. Yeah. So he can also get one back for Daniel Lewis, who beat Zoo in the amateurs. I can't remember when. I think they were teenagers when that happened. But mm -hmm. anyway, so um, I think that's a little thing that most people are probably uh, forgetting. Um, but, yeah, he needs to make an emphatic statement, put um, a boot so far up bloody Pandora's ass, it comes out his frigging nose. So, and, uh, yeah, just completely dominate him. So that way the Crawford fight, Built, well, it pretty much sells itself anyway. Two titles, revenge for Jeff Horn. Tim beat Jeff quicker than what Crawford did. Blah blah. Yeah, it pretty much sells itself. Yeah, so uh, random, uh, random stats here. Uh, Tim Zhu and uh, Daniel Lewis fought in 2011 in Melbourne, in Melbourne, um, on March the 5th, and it was a three-round fight in which he won. Um, and Daniel Lewis, since fighting Fedora, has never fought again. No, he's had he had a few uh, issues there, unfortunately. So, got you, got you, got you. Um, yeah, so um, yeah, he hasn't he hasn't fought since. Um, hopefully, he comes back one day. Don't know what's going on with him. Wish him all the best. But mm -hmm. yeah, because um, uh, I think he, I think I saw I think I told you about four years ago he retired out of the blue. Yeah, yeah after I remember, that I remember fight, we like talked about eight that. months down the track. Yeah. Yeah. So, but anyway, you know, Tim really needs to, um, and this will be a very significant win. Is it top 10 of all time? Probably not. Uh, because uh, another thing I want to say, this is a unified fight, not a unification bout. Because people go, oh, this is a unification bout. No, it's not. Pandora has not been and is not the champion. Yeah, yeah, that's it's a weird. That's weird. Title. Yeah, you're right about that. Yeah, this is a unified fight, not a unification, because Pandora has and never has not been the champion. This is a unified title. Because the second one is vacant. Yeah. So, so people say, oh, there's unification bout. No, it's not. It's <coughs> unified. Well, I, it's very, very rare, but it is a unified. But either way, hopefully by next, by the end of the bloody Easter Sunday, Tim will have bloody two belts on his hand and a Crawford fight will be. Oh, actually, didn't they say that they got five days to sort it out? Didn't WBO put some order down with that shit? Five days? Can we confirm that? Did I yeah. see that somewhere? Oh, hold on. Um... Well, we already know he is the mandatory. Let me see. I saw Swarov or something where they've got five, five days. I, I pray to God that WBC does not fuck this up, but WBC wants too much money. Yeah, no, they're not uh, going to mess it up. I don't see anything right now. Oh, wait, the WB. Yeah, well, he's the... Uh, Crawford is enforcing WBO the, super champion status. They've got like five days to negotiate after the fight or some bullshit. I thought Swarov or something. I can't see. I don't see it yet, but um, makes makes total sense for me. Yeah, and they well, only they do that when they, they know the fight's going to. When they know they have, um, you know, Terence Crawford is not going to. He's not a hard negotiator. Like he's going to make sure the fight happens. Oh yeah, 
Yeah, that's the one thing about Terence Crawford. He just gets fights done. He doesn't piss fart around. So, which is which is a good thing. And uh, yeah, that's going to be a massive fight. Um, I'd love to have it in Australia, but I don't see it happening. So, I don't know. I, I don't know what Tim's a, a, a infatuation of going to the states. As I said, the states is not what it was 20 years ago. There's too much worldwide competition now. He can have bigger fights at home. <coughs> Why the hell he wants to go to Vegas is beyond me. Um, here but, is anyway. here is uh, uh, what I found from uh, Jake Donovan of Ring Magazine. Um, the stance is even more logical given the WBO plans to immediately order its mandatory title events. There are conflicting information, however, on the time to satisfy the obligation. The WBO president posted on Twitter that the winner will have 180 days. Representatives within the WBO have suggested a 120 day window. So yeah, I've seen that. Yep. Okay. All right. All right. So basically, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm banking on July or August. Uh, because right now, the way mm. PBC's pay-per-views are, um, uh, this March the 30th is counting as uh, uh, PBC's April pay-per-view. Um, in mm. May, it's going to be Canelo. In June, it's going to be return of uh, Tank Davis versus Frank Martin with David Benavidez versus Vozdick on the undercard. And in July, and, um, in July would, it would make sense for Crawford to come back because he's going on a year layoff as well. So yeah, I see either right. so I see either uh, July or August, and then of course September belongs to uh, Canelo. I mean Canelo. So July or yeah. August, um, uh, my money is on July. And Tim Zhu is no stranger to a quick turnaround. He likes to stay active. And depending on what type of night he has against Fandora, we can definitely it make I, like even though people are saying okay, well it's March the thirtieth, you might as well say it's April. That's that's enough time for both of those guys to get some time off or Tim Zhu, and then go right back in the training camp for Crawford. Exactly. And that's the way Tim would want it anyway. Mm. He'd want a quick turnaround, and boom, he'd be in the ring within the next three, three and a half months, which is exactly what he does anyway. Yeah. So and also, be no, go ahead. There'd be no problems for Tim at all. And also, um, uh, let's not get it confused. These guys are probably already negotiating. You know, we know how no limit is. They're probably already negotiating. They're probably looking the chops to have this pay per view over there. Uh, on main event, the way they've been pumping out bullshit pay per views for you guys. You guys buy anything. They sell y'all anything over there. So they need this for uh, they need this for Tim Zoo. Oh, uh, definitely, definitely. Well, yeah. Um, uh, the last the last pay per view they did did very very poorly, but it wasn't a pay per view fight. Mm. Um, they've had a couple of shockers of late, no limit, and we'll get into that when we do the Aussie podcast. Yeah. But uh, yeah, they need they need this. Uh, that, this will be a successful one with no, with no doubt. Mm -hmm. The pay-per-view buys will be good. And they need Zoo Crawford because they need to pick up the tab for all the other shows that they've had over the yes. last month that have not yeah, been. Yeah, no more Paul Gallon to carry him through. Exactly, exactly. No more no more Paul Gallon. Basically, the only thing on pay-per-view, um, well, they try to put Sam Goodman in pay-per-view and he's just nah, not a pay-per-view fighter at the moment. Yeah. Nikita's only because he's Kostya's boy. Let's face facts. The only reason Nikita's getting pumped, getting promoted, is because he's of his brother and his father. Um, and that they don't have anyone else. No one else. Yeah, but even Tim words. wasn't on. Well, we'll save that for the Aussie Boxing Podcast. Remember, yeah. um, next week, um, likely the same time, uh, Monday uh, next week after um, everything the dust settles. We might wait till Tuesday because a lot of times. News may come out on that Monday. We're going to do an Aussie Boxing Podcast wrapping up this card. And, of course, talking about um, uh, next week you have, uh, uh, who is it again? Um, Sky Nicholson. Nicholson versus Sarah Mahfoud, um for her first uh, title. And, of course, we got the Maloney's returning. And we're gearing up for uh, Loma versus Cambosos that Big J is going to be attending. So Australian boxing season is here. And remember, this weekend we are going to be covering all these fights on the card immediately after each fight as well as doing a live stream after the um, event. So it's going to be a big week for Australian boxing. Also, I am going to be here streaming the uh, press conference for Tim Zhu and Fandora and the post-fight press conference, and of course, before that, the weigh-in. So it's a lot of, you know, it's a lot of content coming for this fight this week to the point where by the time we get to the fight, I'm going to be so tired of talking about it. Uh, closing thoughts? I'm just looking forward to a very big Easter long weekend for Australian boxing. So, yeah, uh, it kicks off actually on Wednesday night. Taylor Robinson, just a short mention, is going for the IBO 115 title. Mm -hmm. um, and Ace Boxing's got their card on 7 Plus. So 
So that kicks off a very big week for Australian boxing, multiple fighters, multiple titles. It's going to be a very, very busy and impactful week in Australian boxing, I can tell you. And and for me, I'm hoping that PBC, you know, they start picking it up with Amazon. You know, because the way they've just stumbled and just fumbled into this first pay-per-view, it is not a good look. And they can't be mad if fans are noticing because people are like, yo, what's going on? Where's the promotion? You know, so hopefully this is going to really kick things off for them. And, you know, they start getting their traction on social media and really start getting their fighters out there. Uh, take your time out. Like the video. Subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter at T Street Controversy. And while we're here, I'm going to pull up Big J's Twitter right here. You can follow him, as you can see on the screen, at Old Mate Big J on Twitter. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Have a good day.